Hello and welcome to my retro watches. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike. And if you're a British viewer, yes, Lee Mac was my apprentice. And trust me, I'm gonna milk that for all I've got. This is Michael, he is a master watchmaker and I am his apprentice. <laughs> so this episode is all about my vintage digital watch collection. Now, the last video I made of the Seiko Pan Am digital watch restoration surpassed all my expectations and it's had so far over 200,000 views in less than two weeks. And it's actually made it, I think my fourth most popular video ever. I don't know where this has come from. Uh, it's a mystery, but I'd commented in there that I would potentially show you my digital watch collection and also show you the quartz tester. So in this video, I'm gonna show you each watch that I've got. There's quite a lot, there's about 40, I think, and give you a quick outline of each watch, potentially show you some circuit boards for those people who are a little bit more geeky and like that sort of stuff. And every watch we're gonna put on the quartz tester. And if any of them are sort of running really badly, i.e. too fast or too slow, then I'll save that because the next video will then be on the quartz tester itself, where I'm gonna sort of show you all the features of that, take the cover off it, show you the circuit board and all of those good stuff like that. And then we'll try to tweak some of the watches we might find in this box here that are out of specification and try and adjust them. So we've got a lot to get through, so let's cut straight to the bench and get on with all of these vintage digital watches. I warn you now, it is gonna be a bit of a Seiko fest because I do have a bit of a passion or a bit of a problem uh, with collecting vintage Seiko watches. So let's kick it off with the very first digital watch that I repaired. This was back in 2018 and I got this one off eBay for 20 pounds. It wasn't working. I took the module out, which is a real basic thing inside, gave it a clean with some IPA, put it back together again, one stage, the display came up a little bit like something out of Predator, but eventually I got it working. And it's stood in my watch box ever since. Rarely gets worn this one. Battery has only just ran out. Features, well, we have one button here, which gives us the date, which is basically the 12th of March. And then we have the all important light button. And here is that light, as you can see. I think many of us remember these from the 80s. It's a bit weak on this one, I've got to hold it at an angle. Uh, there we go. And this is what it looks like on the wrist. It's a little small thing. Doesn't get worn at all really in my collection, but I think just because it was my first, I've kept it. So let's now put it on the quartz tester and see how accurate it is. And there it is on the tester and it's running at 0.63 seconds per day. I have no gauge to say whether this is good or bad, I'm gonna say that that's maybe okay for a watch like this. So let's move on to the next one. And next up is this Commodore. Real basic watch, very faded actually now. I have got a little bit of a polarizing filter here and we could try and see if we could get it looking any better, perhaps there. Uh, this one I have no real interest in, I was, thinking that Commodore was a novelty thing. I remember the Commodore 64 and 32s back in the day. I've actually got a Commodore LED watch, which is much more desirable. And I need the darkness for that really, but there you go. This I absolutely love and treasure. This one, I'm not really that fussed about. I just picked it up in a job lot somewhere and it's stayed in the collection for that particular reason. Um, small watch, doesn't have many features, has a date. And this button I think is for a light and what it does is fades the screen off. So there's a, clearly a problem in there and not much worth wasting our time on this. Let's just stick it on the machine all the same and see how well Commodore were doing their electronics. Actual fact, ever so quickly, I will just take the back off this. I don't want to be going into too much detail about watches, uh, but you can see the circuit here. Pretty basic, interesting for some maybe. Uh, who knows, there's a lot more behind that of course. So anyway, let's test it. And there it is on the quartz tester. And this one's not doing very well at all, is it? It's 1.25 
seconds plus a day. I think that's out of limit. Uh, I will put this to one side. It might be one we tweak in the next video. I could end up with a big pile of them as well. So uh, I am conscious that I'd only really want to do the ones that possibly are going to be worth doing. Let's move on to watch number three. Now it's time for some really early Casios called Casio Trons. And here we have one probably in and around 75, 78, something like that. Maybe a little bit earlier even, it's hard to say. Uh, you can date these, I think, from modules. There's some stuff online about them. But they're really interesting watches, these. Um, really difficult to set. It's all about how these arrows go across. Now it's flashing. When it's flashing at, at Friday, for instance, you'd push this in, and then that gives you a chance to set the time. Um, it has on this one, trying to think what we've got. Got the date function. And this top button doesn't seem to want to do anything, but I was pretty sure it was a dual time. I could be wrong. Lovely watch, really. All nice and solid. Solid stainless steel links on the bracelets. Now, of course, these were early technology, so they were a bit more of a premium price. And a far cry from the Casio you know today, but this is where it all started, and that's why I have a fondness for them. This one, it says Tissot on it. It is really a Casiotron. I did a video on this one. This has been my longest ever watch uh, project. It took over four years to find a working module. And ironically, it is the same module as now in this one. This one's come at a later date. So I did a video on this. There'll be a link down below should you want to watch that. And again, if we press this top button, I think actually the top button, of course, it's a light. Why didn't we not think of that? So we have a light function and we have a date function and the interesting graphics that go over the screen. I absolutely love this watch. Again, beautiful bracelet, really, really well made. Has a ceramic board inside here. If I've got a photo of them, I'll put one up now. Really nice architecture for something so, um, so early. On the wrist, a lot of presents. Absolutely stunning, stunning watch. Then brings me on to my other big Casiotron. Again, I absolutely love this one. Unfortunately, the screen's a little bit faded, and I think that is actually the battery more than anything else. Let's just try and zoom in a bit. This one is a real multi-function watch. Again, early, well, some sort of mid 70s, but again, an early Casiotron. I think this is actually the first ever world time watch. You've got world time, you've got a time memory, a stopwatch and a counter all built in. But it is almost impossible to use those functions. Because again, if you can see this fadey graphic here that's going across the screen, these are sort of marking the counting seconds. But that's how you also set them. And you have to put them on certain days, if you like, push the thing in, and then you can set it into different modules. So at the moment we've got this on a world time. So it's 9.15 somewhere in the world. And the top, I'm assuming again, is a, a light of some sort that is not currently working. Beautiful bracelet on this one too. Absolutely pride and joy. And I mean, it's funny because Casio have now re-released the very first Casio Tron as a limited edition thing. Uh, and why not, I suppose? Everyone seems to be doing that at the minute. Let's put these three on the tester. And starting off with the first Casio Tron you saw, not running very well at all, that is it, 1.6 seconds a day. That's almost mechanical watch territory, that. Uh, so that, again, could be all right for a very early Casio Tron. I don't know how accurate they were back then, but again, it's quartz crystal, so maybe these, you know, they should be a lot more accurate. This will definitely be a candidate to be tweaked. Let's change it over for the Tissot. And there's the reading come through for the Tissot, and that's one 0.13 seconds plus a day. So it's just dropped a little bit there now. I don't know. Is that good? Is that bad? I've got nothing to compare it to. Um, but again, early tech, it's a little bit better than the previous one and it is the same module. So let's continue and put the, uh, the Casio World Timer on. And there's the World Timer and that is 0.5 seconds minus. 
So that's a much better reading on that one, although it's just gone off the screen for some reason. So maybe it's that faded battery as well playing a part. Anyway, we've got a lot to get through, so let's move on and do some more Casios. Next up is this little Casio. I suspect this is a lady's watch. Uh, again, it's a Casio Tron, so it's an early model. has an absolutely beautiful bracelet. It's nice and thin, but you can see the way that articulates. It fits really nice and feels nice too. Uh, again, early module, you can tell. Again, it's got the counting seconds going across the screen there. This watch is actually uh, a dual time, and you can press the button. There we go, 126 somewhere. And bottom one here from memory gives you the date there we go 13th of the third and the final one of course is the light i won't show the light on this one particularly like i say it's a small watch so there it is on the wrist and that's why i think it's probably a ladies to be honest with you but anyway let's put it on the machine see how accurate this one is and there we go this one is the most accurate of them all so far at 0 0.04 plus seconds a day. That is quite incredible and a surprise to me. It is creeping up a little bit now to 0 0.05, but let's not try to split hairs. Got some more Casios to go, and then we're gonna move on to the Seikos. So these two get an honorary mention. Both have been in early videos on this channel about cleaning and uh, servicing digital watches. I'll leave links again for those below. I'm going to itemize every every watch actually in the uh, descriptions down below with the model numbers and stuff like that just in case any pique your interest and you want to try and find one online. These like I say are pretty early and uh, they both take the same battery which I just haven't got so uh, I wasn't going to buy some in a hurry they wouldn't get here in time. Um, you can identify these model numbers by what's on the case back here. So I thought I'd have honorary mentions. We won't test these two, but they're still very early. Same blue sort of face to the dial there. Very nice. That leads me on to one that I did a video on only fairly recently. This watch came to me for free actually from a friend of mine and um, it was broken and I did a video and it got it going again. Every time you press the button, it goes up two notes. And it does lots of different things. And I can't remember how to get it all done. I love all the graphics on the screen. It was watches like this that played tunes, especially um, that I liked at school. These were things that we could all wind our teachers up with and such like. And I'm now just sitting here playing with it again. The trouble is I forgot how to actually use as the light how I'm supposed to get it into different modes to be able to play all the songs. Anyway, I'm messing. <laughs> Watch the video, you'll see that in more detail. Let's see how good this is running. Very collectible watch, I believe. Not so many of these around, and I'm not surprised. They're all on kids' wrists, probably, and they all got abused, so not many of them have stood the test of time. And there we go on the... Uh, Quartz tester, and we're running at 0.58 uh, seconds plus a day, so that's nice and accurate. I clearly did a good job of getting that one running. And now we have this Casio, which I particularly like. I won this on eBay for £20 about two or three years ago, and I thought I paid, uh, I paid not a lot of money for it. These tend to go for a little bit more. It's in pretty good condition. There's not many that scratches on the glass. You've got all this really cool graphic. It goes round to count the seconds. It has well, a date function, has a chronograph function, different ways of setting things. Of course, it's got a light. Ah! And pressing the lights has made it go a bit funny. This is the joys of having a collection that's as vast as mine. They tend to go wrong when they're vintage watches. See if we can get the chronograph to go. Yeah, there we go. I love that. I think that's really, really cool. Um, it just takes me back again to my school years. Nice watch, very thin. You're starting to see the typical 
Casio theme at this point, aren't you? I don't know when this one was particularly made. Could have been the 80s or even the 90s, actually. Um, all original. Nice watch. Let's test this one. And that's running really to within plus half a second a day. So again, that's pretty decent. 10 out of 10 for that one. Up next is two more Casios that we saw in a double video where I tried to repair both of these. I was pretty unsuccessful with this one. I got it going and that was the main thing, but you can see there's a segment missing on the screen and I couldn't repair that. I've got a feeling it is the screen, but it's still here. It's still running and uh, I'm waiting to see one day if I find a donor to get it going. And the other one, which was a lot more fun, did a follow-up video on this. This is the phone dialer, the Casio data bank. You could store all kinds of information on here, but you could also have telephone numbers. And if we press this and press this, and I think, there we go. It dials the number. Uh, people have reminisced on the video of this one in particular, of having this, taking it to the old phone boxes that you used to be able to get before digital and you'd play that and basically you'd get a free call because you'd bypass the uh, the money slot uh, to uh, pay for your telephone call how about that it is a real cool watch lots of different features on it uh, besides the phone bank you've got a schedule you've got a world time an alarm a timer stopwatch so they pack it with everything it's not the original strap I had to buy a new strap for it and it's covered in muck because I've been using it in the garden. So I'm going to just test this one on the machine because the other one's faulty. And let's just see if I did a good job on trying to repair this one as well. And the data bank is not doing very well at all. Plus 2.2 seconds a day. That's uh, definitely a candidate to potentially be tweaked in the next video. Right, I've got one more Casio to go. So we end the round of Casios with this particular one, which is a much more modern Casio. It's got multiband six, which basically picks up a signal, always keeps absolutely perfect time. And it isn't the original version of one of these. This is a mod. And this was a gift from a friend of mine, uh, Carl, um, who made this himself. Basically, you can buy the module from a different uh, uh, G-Shock and you can buy this separate case so it's trying to look like uh, well I forgot the model it's called but you'll all know it has lots of uh, features if I can find the buttons just all the usual stuff your world time your alarm stopwatch everything else um, I actually use this quite a lot for setting all my other watches so it tends to sit in my windowsill a lot um, so it's charging up because it's uh, solar as well and it gets that multiband six so it's a good reference watch so as a new module it's probably only a few years old let's test the accuracy on this one and the results are in and they're quite shocking plus 3.2 seconds a day i do wonder if that's going to change or whether it's even because it's in a really thick case i just don't know um very surprising on a modern new module certainly worthy of another contender for the tweak right before i get on to the seikos i've got a few citizens so let's have a look at those so we start the citizens with this particular model it is faded on the dial it does say citizen up here but i don't think you guys will be able to see that what took me uh, or struck me about this one was this sort of hexagonal case i bought this six years ago for a grand sum of 14 pounds and i thought it was an absolute bargain for what it was i don't know the the year of this one particularly but it's a still a fairly early one you have all these interesting markers down here for am and pm and what day it is uh, this has got several functions on it so again the traditional stopwatch and we get that really cool graphic at the bottom there to uh, count the seconds down which is really really nice uh, I think you've got the usual as well on here. There's the light, of course. And you've got a little interesting pin that you've got to push in for the setting. But yeah, nice watch. For that sort of money, you couldn't go wrong. And I couldn't <laughs> resist buying it. Do I wear it very often? No, I don't. But sometimes it gets a day or two wear per year. Moving on. 
to this one. A lot of you might recognize one of these. This is the Citizen Anna Digi Temp. Now there's various models of these. I've done a video on a different one, which I've still got, but it's now broken again, so it's not being featured in the video. This one is still going strong. Um, it's steel again. It looks a bit like titanium, but it's not. It's very lightweight. Uh, but you've got the temperature down here, so it's 15.1 degrees Celsius. You can change it into Fahrenheit. Um, the trouble with that, of course, is when you're wearing it on the wrist, it gets really, really warm and it's not very accurate. And if you read the instruction booklet, which is what I've got, they tell you that to get the ambient temperature, of course, you have to just leave it like this for 20 minutes somewhere to give you the temperature, which I don't know why, what use that is particularly. But it's an interesting function. People go crazy for these. And this is the one of the later models. Uh, it has, again, lots of different functions. You've got this digital readout, which will also give you the time. I've got to try and remember what button. It's a very, very complicated watch. And I don't profess to know all the features. So I think that's an alarm we've got there. You've got this going across to tell you dual time, uh, stopwatch, so on and so forth. So yes, it does interesting things. To change the um, the clock at the top here, if you like, the dial, it's done um, through a setting, well, pressing a lot of different buttons, to be honest. Um, and then it's a motorized, so it motors the hands around, which is a really cool feature. I'd love to show it you, but I'm conscious this video is gonna be extremely long if I start showing all the features. That will then bring me now on to two more. Anna Digis, that one's upside down. This one is the ugly duckling, I think. What, a, what were they thinking when they invented this watch? Uh, and that's why I had to buy it, because I just thought it just looked so shocking that um, it needed to be bought. This is more mechanical with the crown down here to turn the face. So I guess you can use it obviously for, for dual time. I've got it set to the same time. The usual again features, it's got an alarm we got some interesting graphics on the screen if I can blow it up. So we have chime, alarm and the stopwatch. With the all important bleeps because that's absolutely a must have for digitals. Again, standard bracelet for a citizen, very similar to Casio. Tell me what you think of this one. Is it the ugly duckling or do you like it? You might then think that this one is the ugly duckling. Uh, to me, I absolutely love this watch and I've had to work on it and work on it and work on it over the years to get it working. I've had a various problems and it's had a number of different modules and now it finally runs. I've actually had to reloom all of these dots as well. Um, there's just something about that strange shape, quirky design that really captivates me i think it's a nice watch for that reason it's nice and thin so it fits under the cuff well and again you've got similar functions we've got a light of course and it has an alarm i can't remember how to use everything again on this watch there's things where you have to pull out the crown to turn stuff as you can see here it's all pretty bonkers and i can't figure out how to get to the stopwatch but there we go so that's my citizen watches let's just test them all quickly on the uh, tester. And the hexagonal Citizen is doing very well. It's plus 0.24 seconds a day. I'm impressed with that. Let's put on the uh, Anna Digi Temp and see what that one does. Now, unfortunately the Anna Digi Temp does not seem to want to give us a reading for the digital side. It's possibly also because it's got the, an oh, and as I'm talking, there it does. I was going to say because it's got the analog, maybe it's interfering, uh, but clearly not. That's running all right at 0.45. It's gone off the screen again. Let's try the other any digits. And here's the ugly duckling one, and that's not running too great, is it? Plus 1.25 seconds. Oh, and again, it's just changed as I'm talking. <laughs> now it's much more accurate, I suppose. I'd say 0.5 seconds a day. So finally the other one that is contentious I suppose amongst many and my personal favourite. 
and that's now showing at minus 1.1 second a day which isn't very good is it I'm hoping that it was going to change as we're talking uh, but it hasn't on this one so again could be a contender I'll put it in that pile right hopefully you're now ready because it's Seiko Fest time here we go we start Seiko Fest with my most precious digital Seiko my favorite of all time that is the 0634 chronograph this was the world's first digital chronograph watch and at the time this particular model came out uh, it was more expensive than a, a, a an Omega Speedmaster I've got a little picture I can put up on the screen about that now this watch I've refinished I bought it off a friend actually for only 80 pounds these are now three to five hundred pounds all day long I refinished all of this case as best I could. Forgot to do the pushes, funny enough. Um, now, this is the most aggressive model. You can see this bracelet is absolute work of art. You've got the black clasp here, which has hardly got a mark on it. A lot of that's just dust. The bracelet came from another friend who had a, literally a new old stock one, and we did a deal so that I could complete the look. Uh, it's a great watch. It's missing a segment here, but I can repair that. I've actually got a brand new module for one of these in the packet, would you believe? Uh, it's a cool thing. You've got a light, of course. This button doesn't do anything until I push the crown in. We've got a crown here, and then we get the uh, chronograph. So we can get that going, as you can see. And we can press lap, or we can press stop and reset and then to go back to the time just press the button in again it's lovely angular this one really 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 nice and it has other models to go with it so we have these two other versions uh, this one is the 5009 and this is the 5000 or the 5001 the screens tend to go a little bit you can see that rainbowing on that one you see it's very typical. All of these are from 1976. I think the earliest of this particular model might have been 1975. So right at the beginning, really, of the digital watches. And as a result, these were very expensive and they were made of much more durable materials. The design was better. And I guess if you were going to fork out that sort of money, you would expect to get a good quality watch and look they're still running some 50 years later with a lot of different look to all three of them but they all have the same module but that one is by far the best to have i've done a full review on this watch on my review channel again leave a link down below for that one while we're showing you these i have another one which is the same version but it, I was very lucky with this. I managed to get it with the box. It's rainbowed, unfortunately, on the dial. So again, we can see how it's done that. There isn't a fix for that, as far as I'm aware. I've asked some of the people in the digital watch community, and no one can fix those. But we still have in here the original manual. And what's really cool about this is, first of all, I have the built. So, Poe Wing Watch and Jewelry um, of Hong Kong. And I'm trying to see what that is. Is that 860 um, Hong Kong dollars, perhaps? And it was bought on the 8th of June, 1976. I mean, how good is that? Also in the, the the book, we still have the same thing here. So A. Holmes bought it, and that's all the warranty number and so on and so forth. So a great bit of history. I've actually tracked that address as well on um, Google Street View, and it's still a place that sells jewellery and watches after all of these years. So there we go. Let's test. Well, let's test the first three on the machine. So my favourite of the bunch is not running very well at all at plus 2.53 seconds. I can get a mechanical watch running better than that. Uh, so that is clearly going to be a candidate. And I don't mind messing with it because I've got that brand new 
module. So let's just put the other two on and see if they're any better. And here's the 5001 and that's much more like it, 0.1 second a day plus. That's lovely and accurate and that gives us a ballpark to aim for with the first one, doesn't it? So let's test the last one, the 5009. And the results are in on the 5009 and it's equally the same. Well, it's minus, isn't it? Sorry, so minus 0.1 second a day. That is super accurate and I'm really, really pleased because these, as I say, are really my favorite Seiko Digitals. I've got another three here, all with front pushers. The early models all seem to have the front pushers and I kind of like that. Uh, it's a bit quirky. This one I think is 1976 as well, yes. And um, they did a sort of lemon version, a lemon face on one of these, which is extremely desirable. I can't remember the features off the top of my head. I think it's a light somewhere and date. Yeah, so there's your date. And that will be a light somewhere. Perhaps it doesn't work. And then you've got a crown to be able to do the adjusting features within the watch. There we go. So a cool little thing, doesn't measure too much. Just trying to see what the width of this one was. Yeah, 30, 31 mil, say 32, uh, 33 even. So quite a small watch for its time. But yes, very, very nice all the same. I refinished this one and made it look good. You can see the screen again has got a little bit of rainbowing. And then move on to this one. Again, telltale sign of a rainbow screen. I fitted new glass to this. And again, I refinished the case, did all the polishing, tried to make it look good. Let's just try and zoom in a bit. So again, we've got um, a light is quite clearly easy to be seen. And then I think again, it's use the crown. Or do we use the crown? So you push the crown in, don't we? There we go. So we've got the chronograph function. Which is quite difficult to operate. There we go. It's going now. So same sort of principle. Actually looks like the first watches, don't it? But it's just a slimmer, a much slimmer profile. But a great watch all the same. And uh, I'm pleased to have it. I paid hardly anything for these. I think I paid £20 for that. I would have paid less for this. They were all in bad condition, not working, and I just basically take the modules apart, clean them with alcohol, try and fix traces if any of the traces are damaged, and uh, I've been lucky. I've got them running again. The last one here was Seiko's first alarm watch. Um, unusual in the, it's got this blue face. Uh, I think that's a, I don't know if it's rare, but it's pretty uncommon, I think. This one still has a few problems. It's got a great, um, well, you can turn the volume up and down actually of the beep. Which I think is really cool. Um, however, the features, so you operate the features by um, pulling out the crown, for instance, I think. I'm gonna get it right in a minute. Pushing the, pushing the crown in, what am I talking about? So we've got a timer an alarm, an auto. I can't remember what auto is, but in this mode, I'm supposed to be able to pull the crown out and use this button here for setting. But this button continues to put the light on and I can't do anything. So there's clearly a problem with the setting here. When you're pulling this out, it's not actually engaging what it should engage. So I'll have to investigate. Uh, put a new glass in this one. I was fortunate to find it. And I think it's a nice addition. I do like the front pushes, as I say, so I'm trying to collect all the Seikos that have got front pushes. Okay, time to put them on the machine and uh, test how accurate they are. And here's that first watch, 1976, and it's running 0 0.06 seconds a day. That is absolutely insane, given that thing is, what, 48 years old? I'm really, really impressed by that. I'm expecting it to change any minute as I'm talking. Um... If you're enjoying this video, and I hope you are, then please hit that like button now because it really does help. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, of course, and leave your comments below. I'm going to be interested to read all your comments on these particular watches. Right, let's test the other two.
So the results are in on the second watch and that's not as good as it. Minus 0.1.1 second a day. Uh, so that possibly could do with a tweak. Who knows? I'm going to put it in the tweak pile anyway. And let's now test that blue faced one. And the blue faced is doing plus point, sorry, 1.4 seconds a day. Yeah, they're not as accurate as I'd like some of these. Um, again, it could be temperature. I'm in my garage, as I've probably said before, and it's a little bit colder in here. It's only about 13 degrees Celsius. And I know that heat will make these run a little bit better. Anyway, I've got many more Seikos to show you. So let's crack on and show you some calculators. So calculator watch time. This is Seiko's first digital calculator, the C153. Big, chunky thing. Um, and a kid's dream at school, isn't it, to have something like this. Let's just get close in. So you've got a full calculator there uh, to do most of the main functions with some memory as well. Of course, the watch is telling the time. You've got counting seconds. Um, I can't remember if this, this changes the date. No, no, of course, the date is over here. This is the trouble owning so many watches. You can't remember all the, all the, all the features. We've got a, a nice light on this one. You press this button here to bring up the calculator. And um, it does work. We'll just try and do an easy sum. Try to use my tweezers here because anything I've got sharp enough. And they're not as reactionary as they used to be. As you can see, the zero now doesn't want to work. There we go. So if we go 10... Ten out of ten. There we go. Twenty. It does take some doing, doesn't it? But uh, I think that's age, and also because I've got a great big camera in the way. It's got a lovely, very articulating bracelet on this one, so it fits really, really comfortable. I'm sure many of you out there have either got one of these or remember these from your your school days you know what a terrific watch this one's been absolutely hammered here trying to get the hatch open to change the batteries over the years so I'm, I'm guessing that must have stuck at some point um, I paid 50 pounds for this uh, I'm not sure whether that was a good buy or not uh, but I just had to have them uh, they aren't easy to find in good condition so I'm just happy that I've got one in the collection these were then followed by arguably my favourite of all, the C359. These are much more aesthetically pleasing. There's two of these here. There's different models or different colour variations, but I think these were the main shapes, and this is the shape that I like. Completely impractical to use in the sense that those buttons are so small uh, that you're going to have a real hard time in your school exam trying to smuggle uh, a quick question out of that. They came originally with a little stylus in order for you to press the buttons. Uh, they are really, really rare to find, and I've never found one yet. But again, what an absolutely wonderful watch. I paid literally nothing for this. I think it was about £15. It was not working, and the battery inside it had rusted solid. And I stripped down the entire watch, took all the pushes out, everything, cleaned it all, put a new battery in and it's worked absolutely ever since uh, again we'll have a light probably the calculator functions a lot more clearer i'm not going to attempt to press the buttons this time um yeah we've got an alarm on this particular version so they did obviously upgrade it somewhat if yeah, that's the date and the day isn't it of course sorry about the reflection this one is exactly the same module uh, all the same features, just and a, well, a slightly different bracelet and uh, and shape to the case. But I had to have the two variations. Uh, but this is the one I would always wear. I just absolutely love wearing that. It's just such a blast from the past. Uh, date wise, I think, yeah, we're on to 1980 with this particular model. 
and this one we're looking at the code basically in the first one so this one could be 1979 if i am correct okay let's test these ones hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the calculators and that first calculator watch is doing very well minus 0.12 seconds a day i am really pleased with that again considering its age and its condition it's still keeping absolutely stupendous time so let's test the other two as well so here's my personal favorite and that one is 0.6 seconds so again that's decent so we can hope to see something similar with the other model using the same module and there we are the results are in on that one plus 0.67 seconds a day so yeah pretty decent okay let's carry on still got some more Seikos to go guys <laughs> Now it's time for the robot faced watches. These are the H239 modules and Epic watches. This one is suffering badly from the screen degradation. I've got another one of these in actually now to do a video on at some point when I get round to it. Uh, you have this essentially a fake speaker. There is a, a, a speaker in the watch which does come through this little hole in the glass but they're trying to make it look really good for the um, aesthetic point of view. The screen suffers on these badly, as I say. You have, I think, a light function. It's been a while since I've messed with this particular one. So we do have an alarm. You heard it bleep there. We have a stopwatch and then we have time or we could just have it to set the day. What is really cool about this is if you pull the crown to set the analog time, You can see it's just moving that hand ever so slightly here. And then if I double click it, it'll go forward, I think an hour from memory, all electronically. And that's absolutely fantastic. This one, um, as I say, I've got another one to bring to the channel. because It's an interesting module inside. This one is my all time favorite. I restored this many years ago. There's lots of photos of it on my website. I redid all the bracelet, polished all the uh, inserts here, the case, everything, got a new crystal for it. Um, I've not seen another white face one, uh, so I think it's quite rare in itself. I bought this in a job lot of watches, there's about seven or eight Seikos, paid 56 quid for it, I think 2019, it was a long time ago, and um, yeah, restored this one. Everyone's favourite, if I post it online in the Facebook groups or on Instagram, people seem to go wild for it. And why not? You know, it is an absolutely stunning watch. Takes you right back to those, again, for me, my school days, really. I think these are dated from 1980. Yeah, that one's a 1980. Just quickly check this one. A 1981. So, yes, there we go. Turn of the decade really really cool stuff tell me what you think of them uh leave it messages down below right let's bung these as well on the machine and see how they're faring over the years so this one's the one with the speaker on it and it hasn't fared too well at all it's uh, nearly well plus a second and a half a day which i think is bad i would put it in the adjustment pile but because i'm going to do a, a video on that model at some point in time of the future for now it's just going to go back in the watch box i'm hoping for better results on the white one if it comes up with something like that i'm going to be really disappointed and the results are in on the white dial version still not perfect plus 0.73 seconds a day um but yes i, I can live with that because that is like another one of my all-time favorite seiko and a digi watches for certain Right, only a few more Seikos to go, and I think the next one's going to be, well, it's going to be really impressive. You're going to be quite surprised by this one, I think. So this one comes in its original box. And when we open the box, get rid of the sponge. We do have the booklet again, and the booklet will date it. And where it was bought, uh, bought, I think. 
So look, 25th of the 11th, 1978. E. Jones, uh, 49. Uh, I can't read it. Is it Wheel, Wheel Street? Something like that. And here it is. This watch is pretty much untouched. We have got a problem with the screen. So it never used to be like this. It hadn't got a bleeded screen before. Uh, but over the years, it's just degraded. Now, I don't wear this one very often because it's, it's like I say, factory fresh. Let's just zoom in. This bracelet is absolutely superb. The way they do these um, silver and black things back in those days, it's just a, 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 an absolute work of art. The model number on this one is a one five nine. 5019. I tend to find anything that says 5019 on it in a digital watch on a Seiko is their top model of that particular module. Let's just get rid of the case. So yeah, so I need to get a new screen for this one and I am actively looking to be honest. Uh, but again, we've got the stopwatch function. And we should have a, a, an alarm. There we go. And it has a very reassuring loud beep, as you've just heard there. But yeah, what a incredible watch. A very lucky find as well. I didn't pay a lot for this. I'm just going to have to quickly look at my crib sheet to see how much I did pay for it and when. Yeah, so I bought it back in August 2018 for £40. £40. I remember that it wasn't working at the time and I did mess around in the module to get it going. Um, but I recognised even then that seeing it in this sort of condition, uh, it had to be bought. You know, someone's either didn't want to wear it because of fear of damaging it. Maybe it was their best watch or perhaps had a problem very early on in its life and it ended up in a, in a wardrobe. Who knows? But uh, very lucky find to me. I think if the screen was was perfect on that, I don't know what you could charge for a watch like this. £250 probably, easily. Another collector would want this model, that's for certain. Anyway, let's see, even though the module is bad, let's see how good or bad it is actually running. Well, despite its uh, beautiful appearance, it's running appalling, isn't it? Plus nearly two seconds a day, that's not acceptable at all. So I'll either try and tweak that one uh, but I am trying to also find that replacement screen, which would no doubt end up being a replacement module anyway. So on the fence on this one, it may make the next video. It might not. Got three more in front of me here. And I just thought I'd say, you might be asking, why am I wearing the finger cots? You don't need to wear them to touch digital watches. And you're dead right. We normally just wear these when we're working on watches to not leave fingerprints behind. But I have sort of manky fingers sometimes and it's been noted in videos before you trigger some of you watchers and you have to put comments about how bad my fingers are or if i've got some crap under my fingernail um so it's literally just to stop some of the vicious comments coming but no doubt you'll now be all commenting as to why i've been wearing those in the first place right we're going to start with this one it does not work sadly uh, it was working the modules on this are notorious to be pretty difficult. The light sometimes still works, if I can find the button, there we go. And there's a problem possibly with the capacitor on this. I've spoken to some of my friends. It's a real shame because this also shows like an analog clock in digital form. Uh, it is the module, I think it's the, let's just zoom in. Yes, this uh, G7, uh, I can't read that very well, 757. That particular module uh, is, again, quite sought after in particular models. There was one worn, I think, by Roger Moore in one of the Bond movies, and that suddenly makes it very desirable. So sadly, I can't show you this one today. Got two more. We'll start with this. This was, again, out of that uh, job lot of um, watches I bought for £53. And this was the first Seiko that I actually repaired a digital watch, managed to get it running. It is a not dissimilar movement or module to the one that's really nice. It's got the bleeded screen. There's very little difference between the two in actual fact. And I have been tempted almost to use it. But um, no, this one holds memories as well. I refinished the case on this. 
and as I say, got it all working. Took all this off, found all the crap and gunk behind it, and uh, it's just been kept in the box now for sentimental reasons. Occasionally wear it, but really not that often at all. This also came out of the uh, £58 job lot, and I had, to, well, I was amazed by it. It is, again, nearly completely factory fresh. You can see there's not a lot of marks on it at all. Real thin profile watch. And uh, it's got some different features on this. You've got a stopwatch, you've got a counter, and a time set. It doesn't have an alarm of any sort. So it's strange, the counter, you can, you know, count things, I'm guessing like this, by pushing the button. If you press the top button, it does these ones. So I thought this was like some sort of countdown, but it doesn't seem to be that way. I think it's just a counter. And that is basically all this, this watch does. I think we've got a light. Yes, we've got a light. But a nice one all the same. And because of its condition, that's the only reason this one has stuck around. Um, but again, I don't wear this one. There's a few digitals I always go for, and it's never this one, sadly. So let's test these two and then i've got one last seiko to show you which is a pretty interesting and again very collectible one well this is the one i've repaired and uh, yes that's running shockingly bad i'm almost tempted to believe that that's not true plus nearly nine seconds a day yeah that's absolutely terrible and that's 100 percent a candidate to try and adjust but i don't even think on a trimmer on a watch that i could adjust that much out of it but we'll find out one way or another won't we and the last of those two and that's running nice isn't it at, at half a second a day <laughs> every watch is completely different and i'm sort of associating them with being accurate or not with no basis whatsoever than what i'm seeing there half a second is that good or bad for a digital watch i don't know i really don't know but i'm gonna say it is on this occasion well, before I get to the last Seiko watch, of course, this one has to get the honourable mention because this is what's the catalyst to do this video in the first place. So this is the Seiko Pan Am World Timer, and I did a video on this. It became very, very popular in my last video before this one. If you haven't seen that yet, go and have a watch. I try, well, I successfully, of course, now repair this watch. And I was concerned about the screen but you can see in this light, it isn't actually too bad at all. The, the numbers you can read perfectly. Uh, I did get some polarizing filter. And you can see you have to turn this to get it the right angle. A lot of people were asking me about this in the comments or telling me to get it. And um, as you can see, I'm not sure whether it makes, does it make much of a difference? I suppose it does from that angle, doesn't it? So we may still apply that after all and um, then I've got the best of both worlds, haven't I? Let's face it. Um, so I'm going to put that on the, the machine anyway. We did in the video. Let's just see if it's changed or not. I can't actually remember what it was reading in the video, to be honest. And this, this particular video has been done completely on the fly. So, OK, let's test this one. And the results are in, and it's a, a very tremendous 0 0.02 seconds a day. And I don't recall it being that tight at all. I think it was a lot bigger. So that's interesting in itself because um, nothing has changed other than the watch has been running now for a number of weeks. Uh, so maybe it's settled down and it's got better. I don't know. Or the temperature's different, perhaps. Um, I'm happy with that result, but it now begs the question on why is it so different to what it was back then? Perhaps somebody can answer that. Has it got anything to do with the machine itself, perhaps? I hope not. I'm hoping this machine is pretty accurate. And I can now hear an alarm going off in the background. They're all off. <laughs> right, let's show you the final Seiko. And here is the last one. This is the uh, Seiko UC3000, which is a sort of schedule watch. And you use keyboard such as this to communicate with it it's you know by today's standards this is terrible but back in the day this was pretty cutting edge now i got this watch and it wasn't working it has a coil that goes around the battery 
and the coil had been damaged. And a guy called Tibby, who is the guy from Vintage Digital Watches uh, YouTube channel, I got to know him quite well over the years and he actually managed to repair the coil for me. I, I had to get it done because as you can see, again, this watch hasn't got a mark on it. Um, I still don't really remember how to use this. I fiddled around with it at the time. I just wanted to add it to the collection. You can see you've got this dot matrix type of screen and you can use again the keyboard actually to change the contrast on these as well. Um, we have a schedule so you can put some things into your schedule and then we have a memo and if memory serves me right in the memo if I go back to it I've got my retro watches there you go you see so you can do all kinds of things with this as I say you can you put it on to the keyboard and um, I can't actually remember now how to connect it it looks like I've left it switched on as well so possibly the batteries have gone in it um, but yeah the whole idea was you could plan your schedule put diary entries in and memos and things like that and carry it around with you so an early very early uh, type of smartwatch um, but yeah nevertheless really good a nice little thing to have uh, because of the condition shamefully I don't wear it that much because I don't really want to scuff up all of this um, I'm not never really that worried about watch values but I am conscious that I've got a fairly large collection and things like this um, might only get more desirable as they get older and therefore perhaps I should preserve them so I'm going to put this one on the timing machine and see if it actually picks anything up it'll be very interesting to see if it does and there we go that one's running to 0.46 seconds a day it's probably the most or one of the most modern watches you've seen in the collection so far so yeah very impressive right I'm conscious the video is now very long I've only got a couple of little bits and pieces to show you so rather than doing all the timing I'll just put them on the screen now have a little quick discussion and then we can sum up the video I'm going to start off with this rather peculiar looking watch look at this you don't see many of these it has got a problem with one of the segments missing on the screen as you can see it's got all the usual functions alarm and so on and so forth and somewhere it's got the um, the backlight there didn't come through very well I bought this because this is like a homage to one of my grail digital watches I think called uh, it's from a brand called uh, Katana I think and it's called the Space Sonic. They're quite a rare watch, looked like um, Darth Vader's helmet. And um, I've always wanted one of those. And this was almost a, a, well, a more angular homage, should we say. So that sits in the collection uh, purely for that reason. I have this here. This is an absolutely mint Timex. This is from a friend of mine called Alan Symes, who gifted me this years ago. And uh, it's absolutely as as in pristine condition look still has the back the sticker on the back all the usual again functions i think it's a lot more modern there's a very busy uh, dial here telling you all the things that it does um but as it's been gifted to me it'll stay in the collection forever again i don't sadly i don't wear it uh, but then i think it's because of the condition it's in and the sticker and things you know collectors would kind of like that sort of stuff so we keep them as good as we can this other front pusher Zernus perhaps we pronounce that it's a solar watch uh, with various buttons and this is a very very temperamental thing indeed it is got a uh, dual time on it uh, a stopwatch and an alarm and I'm not going to fiddle with the buttons I just like the look of it to be honest with you it was very unusual um, and it's probably one that won't hang around in the collection forever to be honest with you because I've just got too many of the damn things um, I found a few more Casios here's one it's got some screen bleed this actually was sent to me from a friend called Seth and um, 
he's a really you know he's really into his digital watches sent to me this many many years ago it, it has actually got a game on it i can't play it i can't remember what it is it's a number game um good watch all the same this is not the original strap although it is a casio strap it's just something i found to put on it um another one i was dying to show you to work but I've, i can't get it to work at the minute is the trafalgar talking watch it's a big chunk of a thing it took me ages to repair this there's a capacitor on it that's come loose and i can't solder it back onto the board and i tried to use some um some conductive paint really to stick it on it hasn't worked very well i'll put some shots of it now actually doing its thing because it's quite an interesting sound it makes and i think it's either a novelty watch uh for fun or it's uh also possibly for the hard of hearing perhaps uh, sorry the the people who can't see blind people beg your pardon um that perhaps they can press the button and the time is read out to them which equally is a nice way of looking at it i think it's probably more of a novel thing lovely bracelet again on that so the last final watch to bring in is actually another casio and i forgot i had this how dare i forget it's the casio film watch um i don't know much about these there was a two or three different models of the film watch and as you can see the the graphics for what of a better word are absolutely amazing on this thing it counts round in the seconds uh with that little black marker but you've got the running seconds here and the time and the date here the 14th uh, we have some buttons on it and do some stuff so they are world time gmt here we've got 33 data entries by the looks of it stopwatch how do we get the stopwatch to work i can't remember i want to see the little man start running how do i do it got buttons at the top come on there we go <laughs> see him running at the bottom here absolutely fantastic little watch this um again i think these are actually quite desirable it's really thin plastic strap um but yeah really cool it came to me a friend of mine nick who i've done lots of videos of his watches on the channel uh, gifted me this a long time he actually found it in a charity shop would you believe so there we are that is the end of the digital watch um collection there are many other digital watches like the mechanical jump power watches that i've got i've got quite a few of these and also a few of the led watches but we're not talking about those today so i will finish with the film watch the right way up that's all of my digital watches so far and uh, the collection will be changing hope you enjoyed this one if you have, leave your comments below. Tell me which are your favourite ones, which ones, I don't know, you remember from when you were at school, things like that. I read all your comments. I try to reply to as many as I can. Please like the video. It helps me more than you could possibly ever imagine. Um, subscribe if you're new and you enjoyed this video. And watch out because there's more videos coming very soon. Look after yourselves. Look after your health. See you in the next video. Bye for now.